second quarter, but throughout this game, I thought we played with the right intensity and, and unselfish play on both ends of the floor. And I thought you saw some growth from some, some of the younger players. I thought Danny took another step in a, in a, in a young career. Thought he was able to make a few plays that, you know, we can maybe utilize him more down and uh, more in the future. What was the difference in the third quarter tonight? You mentioned you guys were kind of in the same situation coming out of halftime, but what changed tonight? Well, we, we got, I told him at halftime, I said, that's unacceptable. Um, we were getting thirsty and, and, and not trying to get good shots for your teammates. And I said, when you do that, the game of basketball doesn't reward you. And that's how they made their, they made their run. We tried calling a couple of timeouts and once it gets going, it gets going. But they, I give Brad and the, and, and the, and the group in that third quarter, they came out and, and did the same thing. Every, it seemed like every basket that we made was an assisted basket. We need paint touches. We need kickouts. We need spray out threes. We don't need selfish basketball. I thought we had about a four minute stretch there that gave them a chance and cut the lead to three. Chase. Scott, uh, it seems like Rui is taking another step as a playmaker and a passer. Uh, tonight it was passing out of the post. Uh, what have you seen from him in that area? Um, good. You know, he's, he's, get, he's gotten stronger. Uh, and our, our leaders are telling them, they're going to switch one through four. We cannot let them off the hook, and we got to punish them. And I think he's strong enough. You're going to put a smaller three or a smaller two or even a one on him. You got to get down, bury him in the paint, and, and put him in the basket. I think that's what he's thinking about doing every time. He's not getting pushed out. He's, he's stronger. He's, he's a better player. And I think that, that the, the growth that I see, which is great for us because we needed it on defensive end, he sees that he sees things much quicker. He's not there yet, but he's still getting better. I see a lot of a lot of progress. We need we need Rui to be a better defender, and I think he came back um, that. And you mentioned uh, Denny took another step tonight. Uh, what specifically did you see from him that you know was a another step forward? Um, just his, his, his some of his playmaking. I like I like the fact that he he knows how to play. He and he looks for his teammates. He's not trying to get. He's not trying to fill, you know, the, the, the last category in the stat sheet on, on your points. He's looking, he's looking to make plays. He wants to rebound. He wants to pass. Sets good screens. Um, I thought he made a nice uh, drop into his left hand, which you know, that's something that we're working on, where he made a little pass to Thomas Bryant for the alley-oop. But I think he's, he's – every, every experience is new to him. I, and I think I, lo I love his approach, his mindset. He's good. I mean, he's a good basketball player. At 19 years old, it's sometimes I even ask myself, I, I, I want to get on him a few times, but man, he's, he's, he picks up things so quickly. Like I said, he's a really good basketball player. Fred. Hey, Scott, just, just staying on the topic of Denny, you mentioned his playmaking specifically. Obviously, those those playmaking opportunities come more organically on a night when Russell doesn't play. Is it an objective to get him more of those opportunities in an organic way on nights when Russell is there? Yeah. I mean, we need to, in order, uh, in order to, you know, maximize our potential, we, everybody's going to have to participate. We, we don't want all the ball handling, all the playmaking and all the shooting, uh, in Russell and Brad's hands. It's, it's, a, it's a work in progress, trust me. It's something that we're gonna continue to talk about and build and, and we got some guys that understand if we wanna get where we need to get to, those other guys are gonna to have to, to help along the way. I mean, the stars are gonna to have to be stars. Let's, let's face it, it's not only our team, every team, that's what the league is about. But the role players can be superstars in their roles and they can really enhance the, the the performance of the group. And I think Danny has the capability. I mean, let's, I'm still, he's 19 years old. I love him. I love how he competes. I love how he wants to get better. I love his questions that he's asking me. Um, it's always about the right things. And, but he still, he still has some, he still has some areas. I'm not just going to put the ball in his hand. Cause you, this league, I've seen it, I've seen it time and time uh, again, you try to put, put it in somebody's hands and uh, try to make them where they're not comfortable. Their confidence is pretty, it gets pretty south pretty quick. And this league doesn't care about your growth. They, 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 but I want, I want him to learn the game the right pace. And I think he's doing that right now. We're giving it to him a little bit at a time. He's playing big minutes and playing good minutes for us.
what what kind of questions is he asking you? Like, what is he inquisitive about? You know, I I, just, I, I said, I mean, I, I haven't gotten this reply. I said, Danny, I just like you to to, 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 to play hard. And he's, and he's like, looked right at me and said, Coach, can you define hard, playing hard? And I, I told him, you know, the obvious things, you know, run back and fight through screens and this and that. But I was also telling him, on your cuts, you got to cut. You can't discount a cut on the offensive end. You can't, you can't uh, uh, not lay, lay some wood on somebody if we have to go uh, set a screen on someone. And – but he gets that. He gets that. He says, but his response was, I thought that's what you're supposed to do, which is right. That's normal. And that's what I try to tell our guys. I should never tell you, great job, man. You guys really played hard. I should, that should never come out of my mind or my mouth. It should always be, that's the normal. And I think he, he, he exemplifies that. And I, that's what I love about him. I think he's going to get better. And like I said, he still has a, a lot to learn. And, and he's with a good group of guys that are going to help him along the way. Last question from Kellen. Hey, Scott. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the defense and defensive struggles. Uh, what worked well today? And I guess any particular player or players you thought played uh, well that you want to give like a shout out to on defense? I, I think we were, we were on a string. I thought, actually, I thought uh, that that starting unit set the tone. We played good. I mean, I thought Brad, I thought Brad's defense last night was one of some of his best defenses played. I mean, it carried over tonight. Uh, he even, even the final score was more than we, you know, that last quarter, we kind of just, it was a little bit after ball, but I thought, I thought um, our defense, our team defense was good. We really, we did a good job of communicating. That was a big, uh, big uh, emphasis in our morning uh, film session is communication and communication, trust me, it, it sounds easy. Every team, every team has uh, work to work on in that area and we're no different. We got some really good guys that they're not real communicative. They just they are quiet. But I think I think it's gonna continue to get better because you need it. You can't have guessing on you can't you can't guess. There's no mental telepathy. You gotta you gotta you gotta know what everybody's thinking. You do that by by verbal. I mean, I love playmaking. I love making making a place for my teammates. I love making my teammates involved. I'm looking for them in every opportunity, uh, as you can see. Um, it just makes me feel good. It makes my, the whole team feel good. It makes me feel good. Um, I'll find them every time. So for me, uh, I took a big step today. I had some playmaking plays, and hopefully I can play make some more for my teammates. But uh, it's gonna come through, through, through time. Uh, Fred. Hey, Danny. Um, I've I've noticed that you you really feel comfortable with bounce passes. In those angles, what what is it about those angles that makes you like you throw an unusual amount of bounce passes? What what is it about those angles that you're so comfortable with? Um, it's just easier for the, the the offensive guy to catch those. Like thinking about you running, and if I throw a bullet at you, like a bullet pass at you, it's, it's kind of hard to catch it, run and catch, and turn around and catch a fast pass. So bounce pass make it more more easier for him to catch because it's more time on the ground and it's just it, it's just making just catch it forward. So I mean it's all about um, the angles at the end of the day and I'm just making the smart the smart the smartest pass I can. So uh, that's about it. Neil. Hey Denny, uh, congrats on your first double digit scoring game. I'm curious, just what's the vibe and emotion like in the locker room? I know you guys have been pressing to get this win. Is it a sense of relief, or can you describe that a little bit? For sure, for sure, we got some off our back. I mean, we needed that first win to get our confidence. So I think we're a great team. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, we can lose even seven, eight straight losses, and we, we still believe in ourselves. I mean... We've been to worse situation and we came back from worse situation. So I'm super positive about this team and and, and, and mark my words, we're gonna be we're gonna be good. We just need to figure figure things out. Um, just play hard, play defense, and when we play simple and when we play defense, we're playing very good. So I'm all about positive about this team. Ava. 
Hey, Danny, um, Brad and Russ have been talking so much about how this tough stretch has taught you guys a lot about yourselves. I'm wondering if you learned anything about yourself just going through um, this stretch before you got the win tonight. Yeah, I, I learned that everybody needs to be patient. Fans need to be patient. Uh, players need to be patient. Everybody needs to be patient. I mean, we're, we're great players. We, I, we, if you sit in our locker room, and you look around, we have great talent. But sometimes it takes time to figure things out. I mean, we got a new superstar in, and I'm new to the team. I'm new to the system, too. And it takes time for everybody. Like, you can't ex expect, like, magic to happen, like, right away. Okay, we're booming. We're 7-0. and No. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. We're going to lose games. But um, eventually how we turn into a team, that's the most important thing for me. And that's why I wasn't, that, that's why I smiled, uh, to the team and everybody was, was positive about it. We, of course we were frustrated and angry, but at the end of the day, we know, we know ourselves, we know our, we're good. So, uh, first person I learned to say is Jesus Christ. Uh, it feels great. You know, the, the energy is totally different. Uh, it's just positive, you know, it's just uplifting. It's like a weight off your shoulders in a way, but you know, it's, it's even better to know we played the right way and played the way we know we're capable of playing, you know? So uh, it, it definitely feels good, but we know we still, we still got a lot of stuff we got to improve and get better at. Uh, we still had a, a lot of mishaps in that second quarter. It's been kind of, you know, our Achilles heel a little bit. So we just got to clean up some things that we, we did a good job of tonight, but we got to stay consistent, that's the key. You guys, uh, I mean, blew them out in the third quarter. What changed and, and what was different about that quarter? Well, our approach at halftime, uh, I came in and told the guys, like, in order for us to be the team we want to be, uh, we can't we can't let these 15, you know, 16, 17 point leads slip away from us. You know, granted, teams are really good. You know, teams are going to go on their runs, but we have to continue to put our foot on the pedal. You know, we got to continue to continue to push the issue because we're not that type of team who can just get comfortable and flip on a switch and, you know, just compete. You know, we got to be able to do that for 48 minutes and all 15 guys uh, collectively. So I think we did a great job of understanding that tonight and the second half was a totally different tale. Fred. Hey, Brad. Um, you I just want to know at what moment you decided you were going to look back at the bench at Russell and rock the baby. Oh man, it was, uh, it was probably right, right before I was about to go to the free throw. And I was like, mate, let me, let me get my breath first. And I looked at Russ. I was like, wait, what does Russ do? Like, what does he do? Like the little baby thing. I was like, Russ, what do you do? And he started doing, I was, and that, that turned into the baby rock. But, Probably should have did it on Ant Man because Ant Man, Ant Man, strong as hell. So, but I, I got my I got my rust off. We good. <laughs> and and on a little bit more of a serious note, they've they've been calling more illegal screens this year in general. Has that affected the way that you run around them? I mean, it, obviously it would affect the big man setting the screen. Has that affected all affected it all the way that you run around them? That's a good notice, uh, Fred. But. I think it's 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 on guards to be more patient and a lot of bigs to get in position to set them. Uh, I think a lot of times we, especially me, I get caught trying to just come off the screen and try to get open as quick as I can instead of trusting my big to hit him and letting him take his time and really get a good piece of piece of the guy. Uh, so it's on us guards really to be more be more patient and uh, and allow the bigs to get a good piece because you know when they when they we're in there, when they're able to force our man over the top. We're able to get a lot of good things on the offensive end. Uh, so we, just, our guards, we got to be more patient. That's not on the bigs. Neil. Hey, Brad. Um, Coach told us that you guys watched some film earlier today. Um, I'm curious what you guys took away from that and how you use those lessons learned and apply them in today's game. Today was a great film session we had, you know, because we were very like talkative and communicating, you know, like how can we get better? like step by step, you know, our switching has been terrible uh, the last couple of games. And so uh, we really just died in, dialed into that. And, you know, how can we get better, clean up some things? And it's just communication. You know, we have the will, we got the, you know, the, the physical capabilities to be able to guard, defend, and we have the mental to do it, but we got to just be able to put those two together uh, collectively. So uh, we were able to come together as a team and talk it out, you know, and then it just carries over onto the floor. You have to be able to talk. 
uh, you know, no matter if you're switching or not switching, you know, whatever the defense is, we got to make sure we're on the same page and we were like that tonight. Thanks, bud. Ben. Hey, Bradley. Happy New Year, man. And congrats on your first win. Oh, man. I'm curious about how Denny Avdia's game is compared to what you expected when he first got drafted before you had the chance to share the court with him. Is there anything that surprised you about his game? He's constantly learning, you know, and it's so funny because uh, they told us when he first got here, he's a man of a million questions. Like Denny asks a lot of questions. And that's a great thing because he just wants to learn. He wants to get better. And he wants to be on the floor. And uh, it's, it's amazing to be able to see, you know, how poised he is on the floor. He doesn't get really, really get sped up. Uh, he doesn't really get, you know, bothered by anything. Uh, there are times in which, you know, he, he asks questions because the game is going a little bit fast for him. But for the most part, I think he's going above and beyond what we expected him, you know, to be. You know, I think he's really showing glimpses of his versatility. Uh, he's an excellent three-point shooter. He probably has the highest percentage on our team right now. Uh, but, you know, he, he just does – he just does what Denny does. Like he doesn't do anything extra. You know, he just plays basketball the right way. Uh, he uses his body well. Like he, it's amazing that for a rookie, like he has great, great pro, like great professional attributes. I mean, he's been playing since he's 12 probably, so. Uh, last question from Ben Standing. Hey, hey Brad. Um, it there's no point in asking you, how do you get this to carry over to the next game? Because if you defend, definitely knew you would just do it. Um, we talk so much about the physical aspects, like how you guys train in the off season. Is this one of the more, maybe more fascinating aspects, like being in the league and trying to figure out how do we actually do this? How to mentally keep this going? It's not just enough to make shots, but how do you as a team keep this going from one game to the next? Yeah, I think that's the beauty of it. You know, it's our league and you know, it's a player's league at that. You know, so it's, it's up to the five guys, you know, on the floor to go out there and just you know, go out there and get it done. You know, whatever it looks like, you know, sometimes it's going against, you know, what, what the coaches may want. You know, we got to collectively do that. Uh, but it's, it's just a great feeling to know that, you know, we, we got ourselves out of this kind of hole. But, you know, the job doesn't get easier. You know, it just kind of, in a way, it's weird the season was shaped up. It's kind of like we're working out. It feels like a regular season. We just now be getting into like the regular season with the exhibition and all that. So guys are still probably getting their kinks out, getting their win back. I know I'm for sure getting my win back. Uh, but, you know, it's just it's a stepping stone. You know, we got one win. We just got to take it on a game at a time. You know, we got a tough Brooklyn team coming up Saturday or Sunday. One of them. Hey, Thomas. Um, I'm curious. You had a, a alley-oop yesterday from Russ. You had alley-oop today from Denny. What, what all goes into the little nuances about making that a successful play? Well, it's all about the timing. Uh, when we get the timing down and, you know, we execute the play right, uh, it, it turns out really good for us. It's either going to be a dunk or, or a shot for the guy that, that, that uh, passes the ball to me. So it works out perfectly for us as long as we get the timing down. Brianna? Hey, TV here. Um, so how did this win feel? I mean, now, of course, stepping into the new year and like go, coming off of the the heartbreaking win yesterday. So to now coming to this one, I mean, how much difference does this win feel? Oh, it feels good. You know, we finally, you know, got a win in the column and it feels good around all around the locker room to finally have one. And, you know, just to just to see the the mental toughness that this team has held together, you know, even though it's a back-to-back -back as well against two good teams, you know, we still show resiliency and went out there and did our job to the best of our abilities. And I'm really proud of this team for doing that. Karina. Hey, Thomas, just wanted to ask, from your perspective, what would you say was the biggest different, differentiator tonight that contributed to you all being able to get this win and finish this game? I have to say the constant communication, you know, uh, that started with me out there on the court. I wanted to sh make sure that we all are on the same page, no matter what. And, uh, you know, and that when we ever go to timeouts, we try to talk to each other in a positive way and, and uh, try and build good habits while we're out there playing the game of basketball. So that way, you know, as long as we keep building up those good habits, they'll go, you know, they'll go with us down the long run. Ava. Thomas, you've been so efficient the past couple games. What's been working well for you on offense? 
just just being in the right spots and letting my teammates make the plays for me. You know, I can't I can't take all the credit for that because my teammates put me in great spots and so do so do the coaches as well. We have great players and great plays that you know that help me and everyone else out there to do you know to finish out there on the office event. And what was it like in the locker room after? How did it feel to finally get the first win, carrying that energy over from the second half? Man, it felt great. It felt great. Everybody was in good spirits, and and everybody was out there having joy, you know, playing with joy out there, and it felt great. Right. Thomas, this is yesterday. I think you started nine for nine. To, today, you were seven for seven. When you're perfect from the field, is that something you're conscious of while you're doing it? I'm gonna lie to you. I didn't, I didn't even know. <laughs> Every time that you guys tell me that I'm like 100 percent from the field, I never know. I'm just trying to, you know, just get easy buckets to help this team win. Chase, Thomas, uh, great third quarter for you guys. Obviously, you made adjustments at halftime, and Coach Brooks and Brad both said they had messages for the team. I'm sure you guys had made adjustments and had messages to the team in earlier games this season. What was it like seeing those adjustments actually work and everything click? Well, it felt good. You know, everybody was on the same page, like I said before, in uh, constant communication that, you know, we tried to build over throughout the, throughout the whole time of the game out there, especially in the second half. Ava, you have another? Yeah, um, Thomas, it was just... Beal and uh, Russ were talking so much about how this adversity would teach you guys a lot during the losses. Did you learn anything about yourself or about the team during the stretch? Well, yeah, of course. You know, uh, it's hard to get wins out here. Like I said before, it's hard to win in this league. And sometimes you're going to go through adversity of losing games. You have to figure it out. You know, that's one thing that the coaches and, play and us players took pride in was trying to figure this out, trying to get a win no matter what. And you know, we had to do it on the defensive end, and we did it today, and that's that's why I'm really proud of what, what else that we did. Fred, do you have another? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Chase? Thomas, what's it like being the five uh, when you're on the floor with a three and a four like Denny and Rui, who, who can pass as well as they did tonight? You know, Denny had the lob to you, and, and Rui found you from the post for that three. Uh, it feels good because, you know, we're – we're all dynamic players out there. You know, we never try to have the ball stick. We try to um, we try to force constant movement, constant ball movement on the offensive end. And it works out perfectly for us, you know. Luckily, I got some shots to knock down. And, you know, today was my night. Other times, it might be their night. Last question from Ben. Congrats on the first one, Thomas. Um, you're known for playing with intense energy, perhaps the most in the NBA. I'm curious, where do you get that from? And does it carry over to other aspects of life that don't necessarily involve basketball? Well, yeah, you know, I have constant energy, constant positivity, and I try to give that off in a great in a great way towards this team and uh, try, and help, try and help us win in any way, shape or form. I know my energy and my presence out there, my talk and feel is gonna help this team and I have to bring that every night. And that's what I wanna try and do. Uh, I definitely feel better, I think. Um trying to get the feel for the rhythm and, uh, and start getting there. Uh, but you know, it's just it's just one game. Uh, it's not enough sample to answer for that right now 100%. So, you know, I just I just got to be out there, play play the right way. If I'm not making my shots, like, I got to do everything else on the court as much as possible, you know, get somebody else open because uh, the defense is still paying attention to me. Fred. Hey, Davis. Um, it feels like they've been calling more illegal screens this year. You obviously run around a ton of screens. Obviously, if they're calling more illegal screens, it affects the guy setting the screen. Does it, does it change anything with how you run around them? Well, that's a good question because I, I didn't even notice that they call that many illegal screens because I've, I've been running around a lot and haven't seen one yet. So... Uh, but as for us, like it's been, it's been both ways. Like for example, today they called some foul uh, on defense when they're trying to get around uh, Rolo when, when I was going for a shot. So it's hard to say. I guess they paying attention a little bit more. But at the end of the game, uh, they made some calls, and uh, you know, 
we can see in the next few games if, if that's a, if that's a thing. Jason. Hey, Davis. Um, what were your impressions of Denny and his playmaking tonight? Uh, Coach Brooks talked a lot about it, said he probably took another step in his career tonight. Uh, well, he's, he's learning, you know. It's, uh, it's definitely a learning process coming from, uh, from Europe here. Everybody's trying to help him as much as possible. But uh, you know, I guess we already knew what he can do. At least I did. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's not so much important what he's doing on the offensive end. But uh, as much as he's growing on the defensive end, you can see that the, he's making a lot less mistakes on defense. Uh, he's helping others out. So, you know, as much as, as, much as he can get better on defense, uh, the better this team is going to be. And um, apologies if you already asked this, I, I joined in late, but when you looked at the game last night, what did you notice about the threes that you missed? Was there any common thread that, you know, maybe you adjusted coming into this game? Uh, well, the only thing is uh, in, the, in the last few games, uh, you know, most of them are short. So that's basically, you know, there's one thing is legs. So I've been trying to get that right. You know, think, thinking a little bit more than, uh, than I would usually do for a shot. Just paying attention to like what I got to do. You know, I got to put a little bit more power. If, if my legs are not there yet, then I can use my arms a little bit more. So but those are the things that, you know, on a, on a usual regular game uh, in the middle of the season, that would be just automatic. But right now I just got to be patient, smart, and uh, pay attention to that. Hey, Davis, um, with the condensed schedule and games kind of falling so fast after each other. How do you guys carry on the energy um, that you brought in the third quarter tonight? Do you feel like it's almost going to be easier because you get to turn around and, and go to Brooklyn right away? Well, the energy had to be there. You know, we've given up leads uh, in so many games already. And uh, that was one of the things in the locker room. We said, like, we can, we, we, we can have mistakes. We can make mistakes, but we can't afford to have one mistake, a uh, bad shot, another mistake, and uh, have them come back in the game, which they did. You know, we still messed up a little bit, and uh, they kind of got back in the game. But uh, uh, we responded well. The energy was there. You know, guys kept their heads up, kept playing the right way, and, uh, and we were able to kind of get that lead and, uh, and extend it at the end. And you just talked about how you have to think, how you wanted to kind of slow down and think a little bit more. Was that difficult for you to do as someone, like you said, who's such an automatic shooter? Like, did it take you a couple of minutes to have to go through all those steps in, in, in your head? Well, that's that's basically what I can do outside the game. I can't, I can't really do that in the middle of the game. That would just mess with my head more. So, you know, have one by a game, uh, then I just look at my shots, just kind of go through in my head what I could, how I missed, uh, why I missed. And uh, you know, that's basically been the theme in, in these few games that like the miss has been short. So it, it, it's, it's a simple resolution there. Fred? Oh, no, I'm good, Scott. OK, you got your hand up. Anybody else? Ben Mayhek. Right. Hey, Thank Davis. You. Uh, you mentioned needing oh. to get your legs underneath you. Is there something you're doing outside of the game to kind of increase your conditioning, or are you just relying on games to get back to 100%? Uh, well, you know, we don't have much time, you know, with the, all this coming back into play after uh, not playing for so long, you know, the minutes restrictions. Uh, we have to be careful also, you know, on the day off, actually have recovery from the game, not working even more. So. So that could have a negative impact in some way. So, yeah, it's basically just uh, some couple exercises here and there that uh, helped me today. I did something a little bit different pregame that might have helped. I'll try to do that again, see if that works. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a game of adjustments.